What is this? So this is what this is what yours looks like, right? No. Smaller or bigger? Smaller. Okay, well, it works for all sizes, as you can see. The V shape is very cool. I don't think it's supposed to be for medicine. Yes, it is. So how did that fell down? I did it. I didn't close it. I closed it um, upside down. It wasn't supposed to be there. It fell out of there. It's supposed to be that. So it's not really idiot proof. No. It's not fully idiot proof. See if I wouldn't have that device, I wouldn't have made the same mistake. But what I can say is that that's a clean cut, boys and girls. Approved. So this is for you. I think I will go see a doctor, doctor. Or her. What will you try to do? Why don't you bring that to the doctor and ask if it's okay to use it? <laughs> so, if you have a medicine of 0 0.5 and a medicine of 0 0.25, and you divide that 0 0.5 by 2, even though it's half, it doesn't mean that it's 0 0.25. It's different things. It's not like simple maths. That's how I work. That's how I work. What do you mean? If you take a medicine that's 10 milligrams and you cut it in half, you now have 5 milligrams of that medicine. No, you won't. It doesn't look like Why are you proving on camera that you're dumb once again? So, because we both know that I'm smart, smarter than you are. You're dumber than me. And I'm dumb, clearly. That makes me really dumb. Yeah. Because you don't really know how to add stuff. At least I can divide. 10 divided by 2 is fucking 5. And 5 mm -hmm. divided by 2 is 2 by 2, 5. Yeah, but medicines don't work like that. Then tell me how the medicine works. I don't really Maybe know. Maybe if it's an acid tablet in some guy's house, then it's not laid evenly. But when it comes to pharmaceutical drugs, they're quite evenly mixed and distributed throughout the pill contents. You can't take half a pill and that one half has most of the medicine inside of it. <laughs> it still doesn't work like that. I understand what you're saying. That, like, it just okay, but it. then rather than just saying it doesn't work like that, you have to provide some actual theory that makes sense. Yeah, but you wouldn't understand. Because I'm too dumb. Yeah. Or maybe that's a fucking defense mechanism you're using because you feel dumb right now. Yeah. Psychoanalyzed. Maybe. <laughs> so when you're talking to a dumb person, we are say, okay, you don't really know. And dumb stuff, you know, mm -hmm. it's like... Where do pills go? Why don't you put your lips together and then we come real close? Let me blow your whistle, baby, whistle, baby, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Was that on your playlist? <laughs> Was that on your playlist? That's why it's in my head. Oh, you've got all the, you have like the American bangers from six years ago. No, not six years ago, uh, from 1940s as well. Okay, it's a range. But the ones that I was, that is the most recent ones in your playlist that you sent me. It's roughly the pop songs from six years ago while I was in high school. So basically you're emotionally immature. <laughs> now, just for context, I'm not being mean. <laughs> Earlier, Fiyash said he's more emotionally intelligent than me. And it came out of left field. It's not an emotionally intelligent thing to tell someone that you're more emotionally intelligent than them. You know? So that, it's kind of a paradox to do that. No, it's not really a paradox from that. 
it's a very unemotionally intelligent thing to, to, to tell you, to go to your friend and be like, I'm more emotionally intelligent than you. No, it's not. You, you, you continue to say things, but then you provide no evidence. I'm a Trump supporter. What? It's just making you look bad on the camera. But I'm not in the mood to argue. Yeah, this is the, the eternally how you'll be remembered. And me. I just want to say I love you and I love everyone and all things. That's nice, but I need more oranges. Those are holy fruits. Yeah, I eat them. The other one's gone. Do you want the food? That's not a party. That's sort of like. It's not really, but it's sort of. Yeah. I use a spoon and you know, kind of dip that and that. There you go, Piyush. See, look how nice I am. Karma points on the screen. Plus five. Let's go. I'm out here just farming fucking karma. And all you're farming is dopamine, bro. Long term, short term. You're still gonna die of mama after six years. This is not true because artificial general intelligence is going to decode you the human each genome. Each million things but won't provide a source for it. I'll go message you. I have a whole article thing listed. News, news are not news. People are not saying it's not news. Send me publish. It's on less wrong, which is the most rationalist community on the entire no. fucking internet. Community is Reddit as well. What? That's not a source. Less wrong? What's a real source? What you want a clinical study about AGI? Yeah. Well, that's not fucking possible. Yeah, some guy who is qualified enough, you know, and who speaks that it was possible. I mean, that would be enough. All right. I've got that. Don't you worry. AGI. No, that's the thing you wrote. Nope. I have lists of other people's stuff. This company is paying $1.5 million if you, can, if you can prove to them that there's a below a 3% chance that AGI will be developed by January 1st, 2043. No, so they're not sure that's FTX Future Fund. No, it's just a forecast. Yeah, I mean, you can't be for sure. find my, my better charts. Pinning people on the AI timelines is one of the most necessary things we need today. Like... It's a straight up big deal. Got a bunch of sources pulled up. The source I have is Elon Musk. <laughs> Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI. The most don't want the CEO. Want a researcher. CEOs speak a lot of things because they are the face of the company. I want a researcher. Okay, but he has data. Moore's law. Perhaps. That went stagnated about three, four years ago. No, it didn't. Moore's law is, has stagnated. No, it hasn't. It has. You can Google it. Alright, let's check. <clears throat> I'll even look up Moore's law stagnated to give you the best opportunity. And then we'll look at Moore's Law has not stagnated. Mm -hmm. 
The S curves are just getting longer, as this graph shows. I found this graph while looking up, but Moore's Law is dead. It does say end of Moore's Law. <laughs> this one says Moore's Law is fine. So it's a debated topic for sure. On someone saying Moore's Law is fine? This is the. But as of right now, it is stagnant. Which is just part of the S curve repeat function. There's stagnation in between each industrial revolution. I actually do have one fucking wicked good paper. There's this one on futuretimeline.net. You ever read that site? All right, you, you Lee Bond, you know that guy? He's a researcher. Piyush? You wanna read this? You Lee Bond. Ah, oh, I have a section in here called AI Timelines. Fucking smart of me. FutureTimeline.net. The first days of the future will be mundane. ASI will come too quickly. When do you think AGI will come? Prediction. I think I will really like this. Give a prediction. Just give a guess. We understand it's just a guess. Then we'll define what's future. Uh, human level in intelligence. Can you make intelligence human consciousness? No, not conscious, but can do anything a human can. For public use? No, private. For news? Alright. Now based on that, let me take you down, down a journey. 20 years, and I think that's a good, good guess, and that's where most people are estimating it. Let's now talk about this human level AI. So, here's our AI human. He has a square head to represent the AI rather than the person, as you can see. Thank you. And this guy, was built by a human, really a bunch of humans and all of human history and knowledge, you know, on the computers and everything, you know. This is a keyboard, by the way, and that's a computer screen. I'll draw a Windows thing to make that more clear. So because this guy made this, and this thing has equal star power as this thing, well then obviously we can tell this thing, and just like it can do anything a human can do, was our original definition. So it's essentially a Siri that's like a human. So I, if I like tell a really smart human, hey, I want you to go 
focus on either making money to get energy to build solar panels to hire other people to do that whatever a human's really good because it can take less energy input and have a surplus once we can do that on a generalized scale with a computer we can have computers replicate and essentially have a Siri which is scalable I'll say hey Siri go make 30 solar panels and as long as that generates more energy over time then the energy cost input she's not smart enough right now but she's trying then it can create more and this is where scale starts to happen and we're already starting to see some of that scale happen right now it's like it doesn't have full star power it's just like sort of there and so we can tell it hey go uh, scam people online build twitter armies and put bitcoin addresses places and people are doing that or we can say hey go publish books on fucking kindle store you know write the book people are doing that um and we can say we can also just use it as a back-end processing thing for your front-end company so we have something like Jasper AI and now they're worth 1.2 billion dollars and their whole software is just providing a front-end interface to utilize this artificial intelligence so basically the GDP of intellect from a computer is vastly fucking scaling it's fucking it's fucking launching one might say. In fact, guess what we're gonna do tomorrow? We're gonna increase the GDP of AI by using it to connect with tons of people through iMessage. And they're not even gonna know that they're texting a robot. It's gonna blow people's minds a little bit. I'm excited. And once GPT-4 comes out, which is likely gonna be probably the start of next year, it's the timeline currently being set. Oh baby, is it going to be crazy? And that's done by Sam Altman, who you know wrote that thing on Moore's law. Moore's law for everything. How everything's compounding in scale. And they just opened up a program to give a million dollars to people who want to build these AI applications, which uses what they've built, which is large language models, transformers, to use for consumer applications because that's where all the money is. Jasper AI is actually worth more money than OpenAI, even though OpenAI did all the hard research work. And this is just how it works. Whoever builds really the consumer facing platforms, whoever drives the user networks, is who gets all the actual moolah, because the money is with the people. And the machines get, you know, the technology already got replicated with many different language models. And like Dolly, which was a legendary, Dolly 2, legendary image generator to make designs, already has gotten beaten and open sourced to the entire public by stable diffusion. So, back to the really meat and potatoes here. Once you can tell your Siri, a private company, as we talked about, Piyush smartly said, do I, when is it going to be publicly available or when is, it, when is it going to be privately available? Obviously, the first person who creates this technology is not just going to go open source it. In fact, companies say they would like to do that, like OpenAI, it's in the name. But then they go, oh shit, this is really risky for the planet if we open source this, so we're not going to fucking do that. Um, and then people get upset, but at the end of the day, they are able to say that and they want to test the stuff and it kind of makes sense. Uh, but you definitely want to make sure you've got some of these guys on your team as this whole sh thing's going down because it's going to be the have bots and the have nots. Now the cool thing is if you have the bots and you're a good person and you're in tune with the future, which is on the fact that once this replication thing starts happening, resource costs become zero because we have a basically free energy resource which is just the fact that there's a generalized system which can farm energy from the world 
And once we have free energy, the price of all resources and products and everything plummets to near zero. I mean, it will be a progression over time as this stuff becomes better and more efficient. This is called the soft takeoff or hard takeoff problem, which is once we get really like as smart as a human, AGI, how long does it take to go from AGI to ASI, which is artificial superintelligence? So that's a debated topic too. The really meat and potatoes is what I was saying there with understanding the future and how all things are gonna become worth nothing is that if you have the bots and you have the potential and you have the leverage on the world, the only thing you should really use that for is then getting good karma. Good karma, I like to think, is the eternal resource of the planet. Because once we live in a utopian world, given things go correctly, another debated thing, the people who are worried about this absolutely just murdering us are called AI alignment researchers who think if we obviously create a very, very powerful AI who can replicate and continue tasking out and we tell it something wrong, like if I say, hey Siri, make me as many paper clips as you can. Well, the problem is that this thing's so smart that it can actually turn our entire planet and you and me into paper clips. Honestly, don't know really how to draw a paper clip, but that's a pretty good one. Um, so yeah, paper clip means dead human. So these people say no to the paper clip. Right? Cool. Imagining though that alignment check mark, or if there's some higher power being actually making sure this shit's happening, and the alignment researchers are just like, you know, backing it up. Then, in the future, in a post-scarcity economy, economy, post-scarcity economics only values, Grandpa, you're understanding all of this, right? Okay, good. Move on. Uh, the only value that you could really derive at this point, because goods are worth nothing and everyone has as much of anything as they could need, is there's relationship value, which is like how much other people value each other, and there's a lot of love. And then there's just the value of all the people who helped the world, starting basically from this past point, but really from here forward. It's similar, funnily enough, to kind of realize this, to the calling that is inside of many religions, which is to say, based on how much good you do here on earth, in heaven, you'll have a different ranking, closer to God, angels order, uh, you know, you get to raise a planet if you're in Mormonism. But the fact of the matter is, on just a material scale, it's really just based on cultural. How much good did I do for the world? That's really the only way we could have hierarchy in the future. How do we value things in the future? Huh? That's a good question. Mathematics. Uh, this is math. Mathematics, yes. So two plus two does equal fish. Um, and Jesus is actually, if you throw a Jesus multiplier on there, then he's able to replicate those fishes. So Jesus is sort of like an AI, uh, if you think about it. Son of God. God is like the universe. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So basically, GK, aka Good Karma. This is the only scarce resource in the world if you're not a doomer. And if you are a doomer and you think the world won't exist in some utopian or heaven state, then you can either choose to like absolutely go hedonism mode and like have as much fun as you can right now, which would be worthless in the end. You should be nihilistic about that thought if everything's just going to go to dust. Or you can realize that maybe you can influence our entire global structure and the future of everything. Because nowadays, your influence has never been bigger than it 
ever was before, because we've never been so interconnected. So our ability to make temporal shifts, which is the shifting of timelines, has never been bigger. It used to be that you would shift the timeline of the world at the speed of a horse, you know, little thing that goes wee, and that's like the speed of your shift, right? You're one person on the planet. Things that you do or information you put out may travel at most at the speed of the horse, but often blocked by the border of your country because it was, you'd have to wait till a ship crossed. And this is like how much timeline shifting happens. Your influence and the spread of your influence. Sailboats maybe were a little bit quicker, but that could only travel on water. And then, so you, thinking big about this is thinking of us, each of us as a neuron. And a neuron doesn't realize that it's a neuron. But we're all now interconnected, doing information things. And this global brain used to be the speed of a horse, and now it's the speed of light. So when you post something on the internet, you change 100 people who see that on the internet, nodes all around the earth, what they post on the internet then scales, and the the rate at which you change the entire course of every single person's life has never been faster. And now we even have growth hacks where we can log on to an emerging platform as something as Rumble, and you can have your friend who likes cats a lot post, hey, go to this cat website, and then we can make it the top of every single video on Rumble with bots who give it all the likes and that's a way that you can increase your temporal shift. And now you could just use that to send people to cat memes, which you could say has a positive effect of like, you know, you might farm a little bit of good karma, but it's really not gonna help towards this Overton window of like, you know, you gotta cross a bridge to make sure the world goes right. So really spreading like the fact that AI is moving really quick or this idea that good karma is the eternal currency would be two pieces of information which are higher up on the scale of information spread that farms good karma. On the flip side, it's called info hazards for the information which causes a lot of negative karma, which is if we like spread a lot of information about how to build a bomb. That would, in, or if we spread a lot of information on, you know, if you have the keys to creating a misaligned AI, uh, this would be a very bad thing. This would be a hazard to the world, and you should not spread this. So, this all comes back around to say, just remember that your vibes on the internet is shifting the entire fucking universe. Um, you can farm a lot of good karma right now. There's never a better time to farm good karma because the shifts that you do in the present have the most capability to really shift shit, right? The longer the time horizon, the more the initial shift changes things of the future. So the time is now to vibe shift, right? Go shift some people's vibes. I like to say, the way that I've summed it up, is that good karma is the eternal resource, and the best way to get the most of it is to spread that fact. Because the stuff and information that comes along with understanding that statement as truth is important. And then the output is the fact that everyone's realizing, hey, right now, I should do everything I can to make the world a good place because that's the actual and the currency. So if I buy a fucking Rolex or Richard Milley, I'm just being an absolute idiot. And as more people in the vibe shifts towards not being an idiot and worrying about the state of the planet, as we begin to realize that this is somewhat of the end of times, it's the end of a paradigm, at least. We are entering a new era. Well, then people will become more in tune with that fact that these Rolexes and Richard Millies and luxury things are low status. Status will actually shift. It will be low status to buy these things because it'll be like, you're wasting your fucking money on that, and then, and then, the world will become a little bit more beautiful, a little more golden, the vibes will become high, we'll care a lot more about each other and look at what we can do every single day to just shift things to a better degree. I think we'll be able to gain control over the corruption that's happening in governments, 
This just requires unity right now, at least in places which are democracy-based. Because any democracy which has voting power from the populace, the populace is able to vote itself more control if it votes the right people in. The problem is, at least in America, the two-party system basically makes it so that no third vote would ever get big enough to be meaningful. And then people's thoughts on that, and there's tons of ways that this system is set up to make sure no third party ever really grows big. But the idea is there's a whole House of Representatives in Congress that exist as well. And you can take one of those nodes, even at the state level, you get this person to agree to decentralize their vote into a blockchain application. And then this gives power to the people, real representation. And this is called liquid democracy, which is why I tried to draw a water droplet. So I like to say the future is wet. Um, and I also like to say the future is purple because this two sides in America is red and blue. That's the split. Obviously, when you combine those two things, it's purple. So, I think symbolism is fun. Uh, there's also the song by Prince, who was into some deep shit as well. You know, he thought a lot about deep stuff. And he made a song called Purple Rain. And so, Purple Rain, obviously, fucking is the anthem for that shit. And basically, if we get enough leverage through doing YouTube, telling a cool story, Building this sort of stuff will actually be able to influence the decentralization of government power, which is where most of the corruption is, because we spend $800 billion a year in America on our military budget. Like, we're not fucking killing people anymore and trying to do that shit. And our social platforms right now also are built in such an extraction form, because we haven't built cultural defenses against them. And that's what we're doing with social verse first. It's kind of a big piece of the plan. And uh, basically, this all just ties right back to saying, Piyush, I'm super fucking happy to have you coming in here full time and resignationing from your fucking company. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I think you are speaking a lot of buzzword and a lot of fluff, and you need to be more realist, realistic. Yes. Maybe, maybe I'm stupid. I didn't understand half of it. Maybe I wasn't following it. No. Yeah. But it's very good. I will stop speaking. He was saying something, I just had brightened it up. <laughs>